Hi everyone and welcome to video number two on America conflict 1954 to 1975. Now the first video was just an introduction to show you a little bit about the background of America. This video we're really starting the course now ladies and gentlemen and we're looking at the situation in 1954 right at the start of the course and what was the situation like regarding the civil rights. Now remember back to the Declaration of Independence, one of the key phrases written by Thomas Jefferson, all men are created equal. Well, America 1954, let's have a look. Well, let's go back 10 years or so. In the Second World War, hundreds of thousands of black Americans went and served in the armed forces because World War II People were fighting for freedom and democracy. Well, these people who went and fought for America, they faced discrimination during the war from their own army. For example, the Tuskegee Airmen, they were often black soldiers, black airmen were kept in a separate unit. They faced discrimination from white American soldiers. Well, how does that equate if they're going to fight for freedom? After the war, people return to America. What sort of America are they returning to? Well, remember in the first video, I spoke about the Cold War, America versus the Soviet Union. Well, here's a bit of a propaganda own goal by America, ladies and gentlemen. Because the Soviet Union could say, America claims to be the land of the free and fighting for freedom, and yet it won't give equality to millions of its black citizens. Can you see what is happening here? It's placing America in a little bit of a tricky situa uh, situation. Sorry. In parts of America, people with black skin were treated as second class citizens. They faced segregation and discrimination. Now there's two key words for us. Segregation, separating groups, either by race or religion. Now this was unfortunately part of America in 1954, particularly in the southern states. If you remember, go back into the 17 and 1800s, Slavery had been legal in America. Slavery had helped to make some people very, very rich. The cotton trade, for example. Now we know that the American Civil War partly was fought to stop slavery. And we know that slaves, slavery was abolished, 1865. But in the Southern states, Black people were tr still treated as second class citizens. This was the legacy of slavery. Now, there was something called the Jim Crow laws. They were basically state laws. Each state could set its own laws and they were racist. The Jim Crow laws enforced segregation or separation. Some examples. Black people would be sent to separate schools to white people or they would have to sit or stand in different parts of a bus. We'll get to that in a later video. Or black people would have a separate and different cinema or a separate and different restaurant. Even they would have separate water fountains in the street to drink from white water fountains, black water fountains. This was the reality in America in 1954, particularly in the southern states, states like Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. Now it goes back to 1896, the Supreme Court in America passed a judgment. It's called the Plessy versus Ferguson case. And the Supreme Court said it is constitutional. In other words, it is legal. If, key word, if the conditions for blacks and whites were equal, 
separate but equal, that was allowed. Now, of course, in America in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, and into the 1950s, yes, there was segregation. Yes, the two groups were treated separately, but they were not treated equally, as we'll see in the forthcoming videos. So segregation was part of America at the start of our course in 1954, particularly in the southern states. Now, the second word, discrimination, acting against somebody because of the color of their skin, their race, their religion. Now, discrimination was in northern and southern states. In general, people with black skin worked in lower paid jobs, so they earned less money. They lived in poorer areas with poorer services poorer hospitals, poorer cinemas, poorer schools. Remember, separate but equal, but obviously that was not true. They were living in what became known as ghettos, lower standard of housing. In Southern states, particularly, black people were treated badly. They were discriminated against, picked on by the police, by the courts, and by racist groups like the Ku Klux Klan. We'll deal with that in a later video. So these soldiers, airmen who'd risked their lives and fought in World War II for America, when they returned late 40s into the 1950s, they're looking around and thinking, oh, I think something has to change here. America had to change. Question. How do you get change? How do you begin to change things? Any ideas? Well, one way, possibly the most straightforward, maybe the most powerful, X Factor. No, not X Factor. That's a dreadful, dreadful thing. No, putting your X on a piece of paper in the ballot box, ladies and gentlemen, one key way of effecting change is to vote. Go back. 1870, five years after slavery was abolished, the 15th Amendment to the American Constitution gave black people the right to vote. Great news. 1870, black people could vote. By law, it was legal. But... In practice, hardly any black people registered to vote. Before World War II, only 3% of black people registered to vote, ladies and gentlemen. Why was that? Surely they wanted to vote, to get some power, to get change, to improve their lives. How come they could not vote? Any ideas? Well, there were various different methods that we used to stop black people voting or stop black people registering to vote. First one, white gangs would use violence and threats to prevent black people from registering. White bosses, the employer, would threaten their black workers and say, if you register to vote, you will lose your job. That's a very effective way of stopping somebody. Another way, they introduced a poll tax. Say, so, right, before you register to vote, you have to pay some money. Well, many black people could not afford that because they were already being discriminated against because they were in lower paid jobs. Can you see what they're doing? They also introduced a grandfather clause and you had to prove that your grandfather had had the right to vote and had voted. Well, many of the grandfathers, of course, were slaves and didn't have the right to vote and hadn't registered. So all of these methods were put in place to prevent black people from registering to get the vote. They also introduced something called reading and literacy tests. Well, I'm an ex-teacher, so let's have a look. I'm going to set you some tests, see how you do, ladies and gentlemen. 
put on my degree. It's not mine. There we go. Put on my degree hat. Oh, I'm very clever. Now remember, to vote, all you need is a piece of paper, a pen or pencil, and you put your X in. But no, they said to black people, yes, you can come and register to vote, but you've got to pass these tests first. Could you pass them, ladies and gentlemen? Well, let's have a look. Now, I'm going to show you something. If you've got a piece of paper and a pen, write down what I show you. If you haven't got a piece of paper and a pen, no worries. Just say out loud what I show you. Are you ready? Question one. Are you going to get it right? Here it is. Ready, steady, go. There we are. I'm going to leave it up. And there we go. Did you say it out loud? Have you written it down? Whoops. Now, what did you say out loud? What did you write down? Did you write down and say Paris in the spring? Of course you did. Well done. You've got it wrong. Look carefully, ladies and gentlemen. Paris in the, the spring. It's a trick, ladies and gentlemen. Our eyes and our brain read it and trick it. So they're setting trick questions because they don't want the black people to pass. They don't want them to register to vote. Now, you might think that's a bit cheeky. Trick question. Well, here's a couple more questions. Could you get this right? Question two. Right, right from the left to the right. Have you done it? What does it mean? Question three. A nice simple question, ladies and gentlemen. Here's some simple soap. Other brands are available, of course. Nice simple question about soap. Ready? How many bubbles are in a bar of soap? Well, what's the answer to that? It's impossible to know. And yet it's a question to register to vote. Now, we're doing some history here, but I'm sure you all love maths. I'm sure you're all very good at maths. I'll give you a maths question. Remember, this is to register to vote, to just put an X on a piece of paper. Here we go. Ready. Divide a vertical line in two equal parts by bisecting it with a curved horizontal line that is only straight at its spot by section of the vertical. Have you done it? Do you understand what it's saying? Can you see what's happening here with these tests? They were deliberately making them very, very difficult for black people to pass. So therefore they cannot register to vote. So voting wasn't really available for many, many black people. Even by 1956, two years into our course, only 20% of blacks were registered to vote. So if voting isn't the way forward, to the way to get change, how else could people begin to bring change to America? Any ideas? Well, groups of people, groups of activists, civil rights organizations begin to say, we are going to organize, we're going to get together, we are going to protest. Now, the two main ones, ladies and gentlemen, NAACP, set up in 1909, the National Association for the Advancement of Coloured People, NAACP. I'll deal with them in a minute. And another group, C-O-R-E, CORE, set up in 1942, the Congress of Racial Equality, that key word again. Well, let's start with that. Let's start with CORE. They had fewer members than the NAACP. CORE was stronger in the northern states, set up by a black man called James Farmer, but many of the members of CORE were white middle-class Americans who supported equality. Farmer and the members of CORE had been inspired by a man called Gandhi, 
Mohandas Gandhi, sometimes known as Mahatma Gandhi in India. And he tried to get independence for India from Britain. Like Gandhi, Kaur believed in non-violent protest. They organised things like sit-ins, where they would go and occupy a restaurant, maybe which was enforcing segregation. They said to their members, don't fight back. Even if you're punched or spat on or attacked, don't resist. Their aim was to get publicity to explain their ideas that America needed to change. And CORE was quite influential, particularly in the 1960s, when they got involved with something called the Freedom Rides. We'll look at that later in another video. So that's CORE. What about the other group, NAACP? Well, here we've got leader, one of the leaders of the group is a man called Dubois a leading member, their aim, equality, use the legal system, use the courts. And they especially wanted to overthrow Plessy versus Ferguson. Remember that case, 1896, the Supreme Court, separate but equal. NAACP are trying to get rid of that. By 1946, end of World War II, they had 600,000 members, so it's a sizable group, ladies and gentlemen. The lawyers for NAACP proved in the courts that separate but equal was not true. Yes, there was separation, segregation, different systems for white Americans and black Americans, but they were not equal. But even though their lawyers won in the courts, still, Things were not changing. They did not change the law. But one of the things that CORE and NAACP did is they begin to get more people interested in civil rights and changing things. Remember the Declaration of Independence, unalienable rights, rights that cannot be taken away. Well, people were realizing that millions of black Americans did not have these rights and they were getting more interested. And we see the growth of the civil rights movement from about 1954, the start of our course. Now, question. Why do people begin to get so interested in the civil rights? What factors were involved? To help you remember, ladies and gentlemen, the civil rights factors, think of whites. Hopefully that word, white, remember it was white Americans and black Americans. If you think of whites, now let's have a look. The W for wars, World War II and the Cold War. I've already mentioned, really, People saw in World War II that the black soldiers, the black airmen were very able, just as good as the whites. Therefore, how could we discriminate against them? The black people who'd gone to Europe saw that they were more integrated and they thought we need that back at home in America. So wars begins to change people's perception. H, head north. Because migration, internal migration, many of the blacks from the southern states begin to move to the northern states and see a slightly better way of life. Many white liberals who disagreed with the racist ideas were moving south for jobs and they're bringing their ideas with them. So movement, migration is beginning to change ideas. Ideas themselves, new ideas. People were showing and proving. New research was being done, which disproved the idea that blacks were somehow genetically inferior. New science was saying, look, black people and white people are equal. Let's treat them equally. New ideas were spreading. The T, television. Most Americans are beginning to get a television in their living room. And therefore, they're able to see racial injustice in their living room. They're becoming more aware and more people are saying this has to stop. 
This has to change. Television spreading the message. E. Education. Slowly, 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 education was beginning to change and improve, particularly for black Americans. Therefore, older ideas would be challenged as people become more educated. And the final one, S, the southern cities. Remember, the southern states were the most racist. Things were changing after World War II. Southern cities grew. There were new opportunities, different opportunities, maybe slightly better job opportunities for the blacks. Time was beginning to change. Put all of those together and the civil rights movement is beginning to grow and develop. What it did next, of course, we will see in later videos. Now, of all of these, one is possibly very important education education america was set for change would that change be peaceful or would it involve violence and conflict that's what we're going to have a look at and the one big area that we're going to have a look at next is education so there we have it that's america in 1954 ready for change that's the civil rights movement developing, ready to go and try to get change. What happened next? We'll see in the next few videos. As ever, I hope it's been useful. All the best now. See you soon.